Yo, what is up guys, Ghost here. Welcome back to another video. In this one, we are going to be going over all of the changes in update 7.1. This is not the biggest patch in the world. It's also not the smallest patch, but regardless, we're going to go through everything here. There are some pretty good changes. There's some nice tweaks to the visual recoil. Obviously, a lot of the weapons in the game after 7.0 came out were a little bit overkill on that front, so they've reined some of them in somewhat. There's also a few balance changes to some weapons, and then there is a pretty big change to the engineers as well. Guys, as always, if you do enjoy the content here on the channel, do not forget to hit up that subscribe button. There will be more to come on Season 7 and whatever the future holds for Battlefield 2042, I guess, as well as the next game that we're getting. So if you want subscribed, make sure to go ahead and do that. And as always, I appreciate the support. So if you missed yesterday's video, just to quickly run over this, on the 16th of April, we are getting the Crimson Front event, aka the Frontlines game mode is returning and coming back for Battlefield 2042. And then two weeks after that, we are getting the Stadium map on the 30th of April. If you guys want more information on that, I recommend going and watching this video here. But without further ado, let's just jump into all of the patch changes. So let's begin here with the visual recoil changes. So they've changed the visual recoil on multiple weapons, sights and specific weapon and sight combinations have been adjusted, including the deviation of the reticle from the screen center. And I'm gonna put these for you guys on the screens now, both the weapons and the various sights for primaries and secondaries that are affected. I don't wanna read them all out for you guys. You all have eyes. And if you want to pause the video and sort of write these down or whatever, then feel free to go ahead and do that. We found out about a lot of these weapons having issues in 7.0 after the patch dropped. And I really think Dai should, to be honest, thank the community somewhat, especially people like Enders, love him or hate him. I know like for sure, he was one of the people who found out about several of these weapons and could show the desync in his video. I know lots of other people did it as well, so I'm not trying to say that it was just him who was responsible for it. Plenty of people in the community found it out, but, uh, you know, maybe they should sort of throw people a bone and say, hey guys, thanks for like letting us know about this. Anyway, moving on, let's go on to the weapon section. So the AK-5C has had a change to the high power ammunition. They've increased the damage from 25 to 26 at under 50 meters, and they've changed the hip fire recoil pattern to have less pull to the right. Personally, I've never really bothered using the high power ammo, so I'm not sure if that was really an issue before or not. I've just stuck with the standard ammunition. The hip file recoil pattern, I mean, the hip fire has been pretty decent on the AK-5C. I'm not sure why they felt the need to change that, but hey, I'm also not complaining. Now the SCZ-3, they've changed the standard issue ammunition by increasing the dispersion by an average of 8%. So this change may make the high power ammunition a little bit more lucrative if most of you guys like me have been using the regular ammunition for the CZ-3. I've never really looked at this SMG as one of the best in the game. Don't get me wrong, it's certainly a decent SMG. I would even go so far as to call it A tier, but it's not quite S tier. It's not quite the PP-29, for example, right? So them coming in here and doing a little bit of a tweak isn't going to make much of a difference to the weapon. I, I definitely think this is the right call, and I'm assuming they're simply doing this to encourage people to have a reason to use the high-power ammo. Then we've got a change for the Type 88 LMG, which has, of course, been notoriously one of the worst LMGs in the game. In fact, I think I've never used it, really, by, in any large amount of time, because the first time I picked it up, I just realized how trash it was. So they've reduced the recoil and the dispersion by an average of 10%. I seriously doubt that that's going to be enough to actually make me pick it up and use it, but I guess we'll find out. And then the AKS-74U, the starting accuracy has been increased by an average of 10%. Horizontal recoil has been slightly increased. Rate of fire has also been adjusted from 650 to 675. Kind of surprised that they increased the horizontal recoil of this weapon. You know, the AKS-74U, it did see some changes in 7.0, and it definitely was a little bit better than in previous patches, but I wouldn't go so far as to say that it needed any additional recoil. Okay, into the next section here, we have some improvements to the shotguns. So they say here that update 7.1 
introduces a collection of improvements that should now balance shotgun gameplay and provide further emphasis on engaging and tactical gunplay when choosing to use these weapons. There will now be more of a choice between relying on movement and agility to close up the gap to an enemy and use hip fire or pre-aiming down sights before turning corners and playing more tactically. This reduction in effectiveness of hip fire medium ranges should notably improve balance in CQC focused areas and maps and require a higher level of skill to get the most out of shotguns. So what they've done is they've had their pellet spread adjusted in hip fire and also aiming down sights. Pellet spread will now be tighter whilst aiming down sights, in most cases with the same spread as the previous update, but when shooting from the hip, pellet spread will now be higher. So here are a couple of examples, and let's take a look at, I would say, like the worst offenders. So the MCS 880, I know many of you guys and myself have been, like, I don't want to say guilty of using this weapon. There's nothing wrong with using it, but it is pretty damn good, isn't it, on Redacted. So for the number four buckshot, which is the buckshot that I normally use, and most of you guys will as well, for aim down sights, 7.0 pellet spread was three times the same amount of spread as the number one buckshot, but it will now be 2.5 times as much, which results in the pattern being slightly tighter and usable from a bit further away. The hip fire, though, is now going to have two times the horizontal spread and one and a half times the vertical spread compared to the aiming down sights. So basically, you're no longer going to be able to just walk around a corner and hip fire somebody from ridiculous ranges. For the 12M Auto, for the default barrel here, aim down sights is going to be the same as 7.0. So, like they said, for a lot of these, the aim down sights spread is going to be the same as it was in the last patch, the same as what you're used to, but the hip fire spread is going to be getting a bit of a nerf. So, for this one here, 1.5 times the horizontal hip fire spread, and then 1.3 times the vertical spread compared to the aim down sights. And all of the rest of the shotguns have seen a similar treatment here. So, TLDR. Basically, you want to aim down sight now when you use your shotguns, pretty much regardless of the range, unless they're extremely close to you. Now, next up, we have one pretty big change to the specialists. So it says here, dumb-fired rocket launchers such as the recoilless M5 and the RPG will now benefit from an additional rocket. This change will also apply to Crawford's deep pockets trait. So I believe previously, Liz and Boris, they only got two rockets, Crawford got three because of his trait, so now it sounds like Liz and Boris will get three rockets and Crawford will get four. I know that's something a lot of engineers have been asking for for the longest time. It's a pity it's taken this long to get it into the game, but hey, we got there in the end, better late than never. And they've also gone ahead and increased the size of 80 mines by 5 to 10% and raised them up to improve visibility. So first when I read this, I thought the increased size was so that it would be easier for vehicles to run over them. But now I think it's just to make, basically make them more visible. So when you throw down those mines, if you're in a tank or, or, or a ram or whatever it may be, they're going to be a little bit more visible. I think they're going to stand up out of the ground a little bit more as well. And I do have to say, I have always found the mines in this game almost impossible to notice at any speed, unless you're like crawling along at a snail's pace and you can notice the little light blinking on them. It's almost impossible. So that's definitely a good change there. And that is like almost it, guys. There are several bug fixes here. There's one for the vehicles, which I will mention because I've covered this in a video before. So they fixed an issue which resulted in several armored vehicles having a misaligned crosshair. And I believe they are referring to the third person crosshair specifically here. So that has now been fixed, as have a number of other issues here. Most of them, I haven't noticed them myself. I haven't really seen anybody talking about these. But, you know, bug fixes are always a good thing. But that's about all I have for you guys today. That is the end of the patch notes. So some pretty decent changes there. That's really what I expected from these patch notes. I didn't think we were going to be getting too much aside from the visual recoil changes. I really didn't expect the engineer change though with the RPG and the recoilless uh, M5 there. So that's quite a nice change as well. I guess that coincides with the nerf to the C5 and the dumbing down of the assault class and the recon class and, and sort of taking them out of that anti-vehicle role a little bit. It seems fair then that the engineers get a little bit of a buff in the anti-vehicle department as well. Guys, if you enjoyed the video today, leave a like down below, subscribe for more Battlefield, and I'll see you guys in the next video.